Oh lord, here I go again. <laughs> In four, three, two. Hello world! Welcome back to Deborah Does Diamonds. Today I'm kitting up my diamonds for my Fuji picture. So come join me and uh, let's get started. Alright, I'm using some of my favorite um, containers today. Um, whoops, right out of the gate. <laughs> This is what happens when you don't pay attention. All right. So I've put the um, first color in my containers here. So the one, the numbers on top correspond to the, the number of colors that you have. And then you'll see as I'm going along that the numbers on the front are the code or the symbol. We call them symbols and the symbols. In the beginning it's actually numbers and then it switches over to some letters. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, keep moving along here. So number two, color number two is code number two. Ooh, look at that. That is so pretty. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So we've got our first two boxes all ready to go. So I will put these away over here. And there we go. We've got our first uh, six colors done. Moving right along. Sometimes um, it's a lot of colors and it's just non-stop repeats, like I would need, say, five containers of pink. <laughs> um, then I will just put one or two in the um, container that I'm using for that picture and I will file the rest away in a baggie somewhere, you know, in my supplies. So, and I'll... I know that I have extra available so I can run and get those when I do run out of just these two little containers. So.
I will just paint a little together today and then um, on another video we can go over details. Okay, so here are, um, I just wanted to show you a couple different items here. So here's the Mount Fuji that we just did. This one is for my English cottage that I'm currently working on. I wanted to show you the difference between um, the color numbers on Mount Fuji and the color numbers on a different um, uh, painting. This particular painting of the English Cottage had the DMC numbers listed in the third column that I was telling you about the other day. Uh, most paintings have a third column here with the DMC code and that is a universal code for that particular color. So um, when I'm done with these, the ones that have the DMC code, I can put them in storage as that universal number and I'll always know exactly what color that is, right? Um, because most paintings have the DMC. Mount Fuji does not have the DMC listed. Like I said, this was a, a, a canvas that didn't cost me as much, doesn't have as much detail, um, so it doesn't have the DMC number. So I'm going to have to actually um, log online and look up the DMC color codes and see if I can match the Mount Fuji colors to what they say it should be and try to figure it out. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if that works out. I'm not sure. But the DMC codes on these go on the top and then you can see I have um, the symbols listed again on the front of each container. So you can see here the symbols are a little different. Here's a number, a letter, check mark, something that looked like a little flying saucer. I don't know what's on here. Plus sign, circle, all kinds of different symbols. Um, here's one that's a moon um, and an X. So, but again, if I went to, if I got another drawing, another painting, and I ran out, I actually had number 3842 in that new painting, but I ran out of drills. I could go and take these and use the leftovers from this same number. So it, it really is good to use the DMCs. I like that. Okay, enough about that. So we'll put English Cottage aside. And this one is a what I use for my Marilyn Monroe painting that we were talking about. Um, on my live chat, oh, live stream, is that what it's called? <laughs> so, um, the live stream went really well. It was a test. It was the first time we'd done one. It went really well. I show some of my other um, paintings that I've completed, and um, I think you'd really like it. It was, it was really fun, so check it out if you have the time. Um, and, of course, there's bloopers at the end, so everybody watch the bloopers. That's the best part, right? So this is another type of kit. Um, this is the one that I usually use. I just wanted to try two different types to see what I liked and didn't like about each of them. These containers, I like that they hold a little more... Um, it looks like they hold a few more diamonds in them. And the lids close much tighter. They are very secure compared to these square ones here. Um, but in this container, these get all messed up and they fall over and it's kind of hard to, you know, when you've got four rows to pick them up properly. And it, it just wasn't as, as easy to get your colors out when you needed them. Um, so I do like the snap lid a little better when you're filling them. This lid actually even comes out so you can fill it up easier that way and then pop this back in. So this one's a little more secure but the um, square ones that we just used I just like them. They're more convenient, easier to handle, easier to put in and out and when I show you how I when I start drilling here in a moment and putting the diamonds down you'll see why I like this one much better. So okay so a couple options there Hope you like one of those. I will actually um, put a, a link in the description for both um, both of these types of storage. Okay? All right.
Okay, now I'm moving on to diamond painting. All right. It's time, folks. It is time to get started on the Fuji picture, finally. Okay. So let me set my pins aside. All right. Now, when we get started here, let me just explain. I think it's... I think it's easier if you start at the top of your um, picture, not at the bottom. The only reason I say that is if you start drilling at the bottom, which some people do, that's fine, but I find it a little difficult. You put, you know, all of, let's say you finished it up to here. You had this bottom section done. Then you would be pulling this towards you to keep working, right? Well, as you do that, what happens to the painting? It folds down like this, okay? And when you do that, it's not good for the drills. Some of them might start popping off, having issues, getting crooked. So I think it's best to start at the top. However, some people work left to right. Some people work right to left. It's all up to you, whatever you'd like to do. So... All right, I'm going to pull down this top cover here that we're all very familiar with now. <laughs> Sometimes these are opaque. You can't see through them, so you can't see your picture through the top cover. Um, those types of paintings are typically um, double-sided adhesive tape type glue. Um, they work a little bit differently um, than the poured glue. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there in case you wanted to look that up on YouTube or the Internet. Okay, so let's see. I like to um, use parchment paper to cover up whatever part of that section I'm not working on so that my hand's not sticking in it. Again, that's why some people who are right-handed work right to left, but I kind of skip around with the colors, so it's never solidly done until the end anyway. Um, so what I get is just parchment paper from the grocery store. And let me just stop everything right here and say, whatever you do, do not use anything else on this glue field except for the cover that came on the photo or parchment paper. Those are the only two things you can use. If you use wax paper, it's going to stick. You'll never get it off. If you use, obviously, nothing like a paper towel, that will ruin the painting and you'll never be able to finish it. So, um, just the top cover and parchment paper here. Okay, so I'm just going to take the parchment paper here so it goes across the top of my painting. Okay, see how that sticks nicely down like that? And it peels off wonderfully. And it will not mess up the glue. So that's the best part, <laughs> right? Okay. Now, I would use keep this on when I'm done painting tonight. I would keep this on, roll this on top of it like that, and uh, that would be the end of it. I would only keep parchment paper on for a couple of days at a time, and then I would peel it off just to make sure something didn't go funky and it's sticking more than normal. Um, so I would keep use this piece for a couple of days and then switch to a new piece. Um, yep, so let's get started. We're going to start up here in the upper left-hand corner. So I'm just going to peel that back a little bit, the parchment paper. Okay. And I'm going to use one of my magnetic uh, bookmarks that I got from my little journal kit. And we're going to use that to hold our um, top cover down. Love it. So cute. Okay. We're going to start with the H's so I can um, do a nice straight line across the top. So H... You look on your symbols. Alrighty, is number 17. Pull that out. There's your H. And typically your color will be close to whatever the square is um, here. Alrighty. Now, what I do, you're going to love this. I keep this lid open. I put it in the front. And then, let me take this blank space out here. 
And then at a glance, I know what symbol I'm working on. It's H. So, so let's do that. So you put some diamonds in your tray, and then you just kind of shake them around a little bit. Not too hard, because you don't want to slosh them over the side. And you'll notice they start to line up in these little um, troughs. Okay? And I look over the diamonds. I like to see if there's anything weird in there. Um, sometimes you get things, little bits of extra plastic, or maybe one looks too small, um, a defect. And you would take those out and set them in your trash tray here. Um, but these look pretty good. The color is really pretty. It's almost like a cobalt blue. Okay. Let's put some wax in our pen. This is how you're going to pick the diamonds up. Okay. So you just take this, peel back this top cover here. Take your pen and you just stick it in the uh, wax like that. I like to do it a couple times. And now we're ready to get started. So Okay, we are ready to start diamond painting. Excellent day. Uh, before we get started, I have to show you the ring. Today's stone is peridot. Some people call it peridot, but I like to call it peridot. That's the old school. It's green, and um, it is the birthstone for August. So I have a pretty flower... Um, motif here on this one. So, okay, let's get painting. So what I normally would do is I would pick like maybe a section this big and work on all the different colors in it and then move to the next square and then the next until the row is done and then I would start on the next row. All right, folks. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. Hope you learned something new about kitting up diamonds. And um, I hope you've already bought your first picture and that you are getting started. So we'll see you next time. But in the meantime, be good to one another. We're done. So don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And hit the bell notification so you'll know when our next video is on its way. 
That was a good one. That was a good Keep one. Keep the last one. And I like my smile at the end. Because I'm like... <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> to do it over. I forgot to sit still for a second. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, so don't forget, hit that subscribe button, give me two thumbs up if you love the video. Nope. Oh, it's one thumbs up. Dang it! I have two thumbs! I think it's two thumbs! I'll try that again. So I just say, don't forget to subscribe. Okay. Don't forget to su Don't forget to subscribe! Hit that. Nah, why can't I get that straight? I'm so tired. Maybe that's why. Okay, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to hit that bell notification. <laughs> I can't do that. Okay, try it again. Um, thumbs up if you like the video. And hit the bell notification so you know when our next video is on its way to you. Thank you. Oh, I waved. What am I doing? I'm saying, uh, oh, okay, yeah. <sighs> I always say thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you know when our next video is on its way to you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pause. I'm pausing now. Isn't that what they do in the studios? <laughs>